something I want to show you, and I, I, I actually got this from uh, a, a new friend of mine, and that's um, Code Mentor. So there's not, not an advertisement or anything oh, yeah. like that. Um, but something that really stuck out, and, and I'm thinking about this myself, is actually jumping on here, being a mentor, and helping people solve problems because they, they actually pay for it, right? So if you're struggling and you don't really want to continue struggling, you can jump on Code Mentor, hire a developer to look at your code, I think even real time, to help you solve a bug or just, just nudge you in the right direction. And the reason I think this is really cool for you and I is if you are doing it, let's say a couple times a week, you might start seeing a common pattern with certain bugs that are happening. And then boom, that's a new YouTube video that helps everyone yeah. that won't do code mentor. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I actually use them all the time. Oh, you do. <laughs> oh, to solve your own problems. Absolutely. Oh yeah. There's, I mean, we don't know everything. A lot sure. of times people assume if you're putting together a video, you, you kind of have it all together. That's absolutely, you know, couldn't be further from the truth. At least in my case, I'm, I'm only three years at this. So all the time I'll do that. And if it's not like a Django thing, um, I'll have someone build out something in Node.js. Like they'll build me a prototype and then I'll just reverse engineer it and make it happen in Django. Like I, I have to, um, cause you can't always find, I guess, the best mentor that uses your sure. tech stack. So I'm, I'm, I'm fluent enough with all of those that I can still make it work, whether that's PHP or, you know, whatever I'm dealing with. But yeah, I, I probably go to them almost once every other Wow. Week. That's amazing. So, um, I, I honestly, I love the challenge of trying to solve whatever it is, right? So I will spend weeks on end trying to figure out what's going on with that. And I realize not everyone's that way. I mean, you just said it, you're not that way. Um, so, but, but I think the, the key thing from a business perspective for me on it, um, and if you're really trying to get better, do you really want to spend months at a time trying to solve a challenge that would take an expert an hour? or less. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. So, so like if you could approximate it, how much do you think you've spent on code mentor, like financially? Oh gosh, it's gotta be at least over $5,000. Wow. Okay. I think at this point that, that's yeah. over time. I mean, and you're right. Like I actually do enjoy figuring something out. Like I'll totally uh, spend that time. If I have that, that chance, there's a, there's times where I'll just run into a bug or like something will happen in production. Like it's happened to that website, uh, that I built for that company. And I just, I'm not going to, I don't have that luxury of spending a week on this. And I have customers calling me right now because of this bug and I need to get it solved. So absolutely. I'm going to these guys. I got to just make it work. Dude, that is like, it's, it, it's opened my eyes. Cause I, I believe code mentors hit me up before uh, in the past. And I was always just like, eh, like I, I've been very much like, eh, on all sorts of things for a while, uh, except for teaching. Yeah. Um, but, but the idea that it just cuts through the fat, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, oh, you could post it on Stack Overflow for sure. And maybe you get an answer, but maybe not. Yeah. Code Mentor seems like you definitely get an answer. You said the stack might be wrong. So that's that's interesting. I, I haven't really thought about that. Uh, and maybe that's why people like us uh, or, or anyone who's listening that's really good at Django that could actually provide advice, that might be a really good place for it. Man, I feel like this is a raving review and I haven't even used it. <laughs> um, <laughs> do, do you... Um, I guess like, do you actually talk to the person or do you just write? Yeah. So yeah. So you get a full on uh, zoom meeting. So what, what you do is you put out your request um, and then somebody will reply to it. What I usually do is I get a free session. So like, I'll just tell them, Hey, let's get on. Let me, let me elaborate on my problem. Maybe show you some code. So right away you go to the zoom call, you can screen share and uh, they'll just go into it. Once they can, you just hit, you know, pay per session and you pay in 15 minute increments. Yep. So they'll just have their budget and you just go ahead and live one-on-one -on -one sharing screens. So do the, the developers themselves, that do they set what rate they want to charge and stuff like that? Yeah. So they'll tell you ahead. So when they, when they, when they uh, reach out to you, they usually have like, have it on their account. Like I charge $20 per 15 minutes or whatever that is. And I know some of those prices could be higher for, for people just starting out, but I've done it to where I'll just connect with them directly. And I'll be like, Hey, let's, let's, figure out a fixed rate for this because this is going to be like an all day thing. And can I just have you for the day for 200 bucks or whatever? That sure. Is. And uh, usually they're up for it. That's uh, yeah, yeah. amazing. I definitely, I have really good people on it. I mean, these are talented people. I, I 100% am going to try it out and hopefully I can get somebody from code mentor um, to, 
jump on here as well. I would love to chat with with uh, somebody on there to hear more about it. But um, I've always recommended to people to hire a freelancer on Upwork. Um, but but being alerted to this and the fact that you use it, I'm like, maybe that's not the best way because the freelancer, they're just trying to turn clients where a mentor, a teacher mm -hmm. is going to take their time to hopefully help what you're trying to solve and not just be like, yeah, it's fine. You're good. Keep, keep going. Let's go to the next project type of thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing about these guys is they're reputable as far as like the companies they work at. Like some of these guys work at fortune 500 companies that you'll recognize. I mean, it's guys just trying to make an extra buck on the side and wow, they have some good platforms. So they're not just freelancers. Yeah. They're not just trying to quickly turn this, I guess. And I think a big one for me is, is how you ask the questions. Cause you could get those type of people that will just say they can do it, give you a, an answer that really isn't the best one and move on, try to just earn a quick buck from that. But if you learn how to elaborate, how to vet them, because vetting your, you know, I've done it with employees before. In this case, it's just freelancers. If you learn how to vet them and set them up for success, then it'll work correctly. But you can definitely spend some money and get nothing out of it if you don't do it correctly. So how do you, how do you do it correctly then? I mean, it's, there's ways you ask the question. So first of all, when you're asking a question, I've made the mistake of just putting out like a general request and then getting them on and paying them. Right. And then it turns out that they really didn't understand my problem. And then we spend time on that call. The clock is running, trying to debug this thing. So what I do is I, I make sure that I tell them all the things that I've done to try to fix this, where this bug is happening to have all the code prepped before that call. So once they're on it, I can quickly put everything out, give them all the pieces that aren't working. And then if I find that they don't understand one of those pieces, I can quickly understand that they're not maybe the best fit to help me. But if you just go out generically and just think, hey, somebody's going to help me with this because they're an expert, there's a good chance they're not going to understand it. So prepping, prepping your code correctly, I guess, too. Yeah. Because they may understand it, but you may not present it to them in the right way. So I, I probably spent a couple hundred dollars before I really learned that method and became effective. Interesting. I, I would really encourage you to make a full on video, how to use code mentor. Well, that would be amazing. Yeah. That's actually a good one. It, I didn't think about yeah, that. Um, yeah. 